QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Employee Section Payroll Process. Let's get into it with Intuit QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the home page open. You can open the home page by going to the company drop down, selecting home page. We also have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list, and then having the carrot either collapsed or uncollapsed whether or not you want to see the open windows. I'm going to collapse them for now, focusing down here on the home on the employee section of the home page where we have the payroll process, the payroll flow down below. Now note, uh, when you think about the payroll, it's an add-on feature for QuickBooks, but you can use the manual payroll, which we have set up here. So we'll get into a lot more detail on, on the payroll options and setting up the payroll in future presentations future presentations when we actually start to go through the, the setting up of the practice problem. So you might want to uh, jump down there if you've got questions on, on the different formats of the payroll. If you're thinking about how to set up payroll, I highly recommend uh, you know taking a look at, at basically that section and then getting advice on what your options are for setting up the payroll. We're going to go through the practice problem here with the manual payroll, but just remember I do not recommend manual payroll for the most part for someone to actually be using in their in their practice because manual payroll means we have to manually calculate the payroll tax withholdings, which is great for a practice problem because it gets more awareness of how that is done and the complications of it. Uh, but uh, it'd be a, a really nice to have the computer to calculate those items uh, because it's less likely to make errors on that. So you want to think about whether or not to add on uh, the payroll item within QuickBooks or you can think about having a third party payroll system and if you do that, how would you integrate that into uh, your QuickBooks system? So notes down here in the employee section, if you have this arrow going all the way across, then that's going to be an indication that you have some kind of payroll that is going to be set up within uh, the QuickBooks system. The way to find the manual payroll, which again is great practice for a practice problem, is to go to the edit drop down, go to the preferences, and then we're going to go to the payroll and employees. Uh, on the left side and then in the company preferences you've got this manual payroll check mark and that's in 2021 version to, to do that and it's really nice that they have that there that's that's basically a new location for it uh, to have that if you click that off then it's going to ask you um, whether or not you want to buy the payroll <laughs> at that point and if you say no I want the manual payroll then you will add the the items down here great practice tool now if you're in something prior to uh, 2021 you may still be able to turn on the manual payroll but you used to have to go through this help item and the only way you can kind of turn it on was to have a link uh, that was provided to you through the help item so you could you could try that if you have some version other than 2021 opening up the help search screen then you want to type in manual payroll and then and then you can go through the the what it comes up with there uh, for that and hopefully there'll be a little click on link that you can go to and turn on the manual payroll much better in 2021 that they housed it in the edit option but in any case we're down here in the employee section once turned on the major two components you will have for the payroll is to pay the employees processing the payroll and then the liabilities that will be impacted that you'll have to pay at a later point in time you also have the enter time on the left hand side so the enter time is going to be an item that will allow you to basically track time. It's kind of like a time clock system that you can enter time. And if you have like uh, multiple employees that you're going to be tracking time for, then you could use this system kind of like a, a clock or a time tracker that will then be linked to the payroll. So if you pay hourly, you can link that information here and it can help you to calculate the number of hours to help you calculate your payroll calculation. But you don't have to use the time tracker in order to pay hourly. You might have someone track outside of the system using some other software to track their time uh, or, or report their time in some other way. But this tool also can be useful. Notice it's also pointing up here to the invoice because you can also link it to the invoicing process. So if you have a job cost type of system and uh, say you have multiple different, you're, say you're a law firm and you have multiple different people that are working under you, you you might then require them to enter their data into a timesheet in some way, shape, or form. You're charging a billable rate based on their time, not their employee, not their pay rate necessarily, what you're going to bill your customers for. 
And then once this timesheet has been entered, you can then create an invoice which will help you to populate their time on the sheet or your time on the invoice and then help you to calculate your billable items. So this serves two purposes. It could be useful in a, in a billable system such as that to track your time and bill it to the customers. It can also be used to track employee time and, and pay them. Remember that the payroll rate and the billable rate do not necessarily have to be the same amount. Then of course we pay the employees. And this is the most complex step in the process. And when we pay the employees, we'll focus mainly on the federal kind of taxes that will be involved paying the employees. State taxes, of course, could be involved and they will change from state to state. They will typically mirror or be similar to federal taxes if applicable uh, in the state. So you can kind of, you know, use the federal tax as a template. But we're going to be paying the employees and we'll, we'll basically, uh, what will the journal entry be when we pay the employees? We're going to have payroll expense for the gross pay and then we're going to have the um, the actual check that will be leave, but it'll be the net check. The difference between the two is going to be the payroll liabilities that are going to go up, the payroll taxes of the employees, which is going to be Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax for the employees. And then we also have the employer taxes that will also increase the payroll tax expense, Social Security, Medicare on the employer side. And then we have uh, the payroll liabilities that are going to be increased. So in other words, we're going to be increasing liabilities as we record this for the employee liabilities, Social Security, Medicare, <clears throat> Social Security, Medicare and federal income tax and the employer portion, which Social Security and Medicare. So that's the federal taxes that we will then have to pay at a later time. So then at this, this little widget will help us then to uh, to track the payroll taxes that are owed as we process the payroll and then pay them. So let's take a quick look at that on the financials. Let's go to the reports drop down, company and financial. Let's open up the balance sheet. I'm going to open up the open windows so we can be doing some toggling between the, the financials. I'm going to go to the customized reports. We're going to go to 01, 01, uh, 21, to 12, 31, 21, and OK. And then obviously when we pay the payroll, the checking account will be going down. So if I double click on the checking account, you, you'll see that uh, we'll have payroll checks. Our two employees are Adam and Erica. So if I was to look at like Adam's paycheck here, I double click on Adam's paycheck. And this is the net check that went out. So the actual check that went out is this. If it was an electronic transfer, it would still look like a check. You've seen our, we've seen our check forms before, but now it's a special check, but you could tell by the bottom that has this other item down below it. If it was some other type of payment, we would still see the same check type form because the check form represents the decrease to the checking account. And so if I'm going to then say, show me the details, notice the net check is down here. The gross pay is actually this. This is what was earned minus the stuff that was taken out, federal uh, withholding, social security and Medicare. This is what they actually got. So the difference between those two is, 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 is going to be these items. So I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to close this back out and close this back out. Now the other side of, of that, transaction would typically be on the income statement as an expense. So let's take a look at that first. Go to the reports, company and financial, profit and loss. And then I'm going to change the dates from 01, 01, 21 to 12, 31, 21. And then we have the payroll expense down here. So if I go to uh, the payroll expense, this item, double click on that. I'm going to scroll down to that check that we were looking at. So it was Adam Hamilton. Now we have multiple transactions here because it's breaking out multiple transactions, but this is the one we focus on now, that 4583 for the expense side of things. That's not the actual net check now, that's the gross pay. So we're recording the gross pay on the income statement and the net check obviously went out in the checking account. That's how much cash left. The difference between the two is the withholdings, which in this case only are including the federal income taxes, not including any other benefits like a 401k plan and whatnot, or state taxes, that being the federal income tax, Social Security, and the Medicare. These two are also federal taxes, but they're not the federal income tax. They're charged by the federal government, but they're not federal income tax. Okay. And so then, so that's the difference. If I was to close that back out and close this back out and close this back out, then if you go back to the balance sheet, you're going to say we have the payroll tax liability down here. So if I go down to the liability, we're going to say that uh, we have the payroll tax liability. 
and it's not here because it has been oh no here it is payroll liabilities so i'm going to double click the payroll liabilities and then i'm going to scroll down i'm looking for adam again they're breaking it out in detail so here's the social security and then the medicare and then the uh well social security uh this is the so this is the federal income tax social security and medicare now then so that's that's basically the employee portion of the transaction the employee portion of the transaction is that the checking account is going to go down by the net check and then on the income statement we record the full wages that were earned including the payroll taxes so we're not deducting the payroll taxes the difference is going to be these these items here that we're going to increase the liability because we're going to have to pay them in the future now you might say well why is this one in here twice that looks like social security got double recorded it got double recorded because the employer is then going to have to pay their portion kind of like a matching type of thing on top of of the wages that were taken out of the paycheck so these are the payroll tax expenses these are the payroll tax expense side of things so if i go back into here and i look at this paycheck again these are recorded over here notice it's the same amount it's the same amount as was taken out of the paycheck because it's kind of like a matching thing but this is the amount that the employer has to pay over and above the wages so in other words the employee earned four thousand five eighty three thirty three even though they didn't get that we took that money out of their check to pay their taxes the taxes that theoretically are charged to them but then we had to pay more than that so so notice this whole scenario we still only it's all the employees earnings so it's still whatever the employee earned is what the employee earned we just had to pay the government uh part of their earnings that's the that's the theory of it and because we're required to do so but we also have to pay more than the employee earnings above their earnings by these two amounts and and there would be these are just the social security and medicare we would have federal unemployment tax as well which is a much smaller amount but in any case these two amounts would be what we have to pay over and above their earnings so we have to increase our taxes by the social security and medicare for the employer portion and that side too would be on the profit and loss that side you might break out in another account called payroll taxes the payroll taxes would not include the employee payroll taxes would not include the employee social security and medicare because that would be in the employee wages and just payroll payroll taxes if you were to break them out would only be the employer taxes so in other words if i go back in here the the this number represents the gross pay for atom which includes the payroll taxes that atom is paying which never adam never got because adam never had to actually pay them they were taken out by us the employer for adam to pay adam's taxes these two items are the social security and medicare which would be the payroll taxes to us the payroll tax expense the employer payroll taxes and these are the two items that could be broken out into another account called uh the payroll taxes so that's going to be the the basic journal entry there and then and that would record uh this item now obviously payroll is a complex that was a complex journal entry with just one employee that we kind of analyzed uh if you get multiple employees and you're paying them like weekly the more times you pay them the more complex it gets as well we just had one employee that were paid monthly and we see there's a lot of detail in there so you you do want to get some advice on the payroll but then you would pay the payroll the payroll liability at this point so obviously if i go if i go back to the balance sheet we we accumulated this liability so when the payroll is processed we accumulated the liability we took money from the employees we actually just took it out of their paycheck not for us because we have to pay the employee we have to pay the government and we had our payroll that we got to pay the government so at some future date then of course we're going to pay the government which would be decreasing the checking account checking account would go down at that point and then we would uh, record that we would decrease the payroll liability at that point so that's going to be the, the standard process for payroll it seems fairly simple and it, it's not it's not too complex but you can just imagine the amount of detail that payroll will accumulate if if you have even a very small amount of employees given the number of withholdings and, and we're just talking about federal uh taxes we're not talking about 401k plans and uh you know the other type of uh, fringe benefits that could be withheld as well as uh, state taxes that could be withheld uh, so you know the payroll can get complex quite uh, quite quickly but 
the general idea of it is going to be that. We'll get into a little bit more detail on uh, the entering of the payroll in future presentations.